everybody welcome back to my channel I am so glad you're here today um, it is Wednesday March 12th I think um, and I am actually filming my video for today today uh, typically I do these a day or two in advance but I wasn't sure if um, what I was going to talk about today was actually gonna work and um, since I I think it's going to I'm going to do a video on it and uh, yeah so let's jump into it um, today I am hopping on to talk about Angor rabbit um, breeding uh, essentially I am going to talk about um, getting ready for having babies with your rabbits and things you should have on hand and uh, things to watch out for things you can do in case it doesn't go well. And so I'm gonna to try to touch on all of those. Um, I have been doing this for almost 20 years and when I first started out, I was breeding quite continually because I was breeding up to get to a point where I had enough rabbits to actually do my fiber um, spinning and yarn and all of the stuff. And so my first probably five to eight years of doing this, I bred a couple times a year, if not more. Um, I started out with two females and a male and quickly grew that into, oh goodness, I had 30 some rabbits at one time within a few short years. Um, and I also sold my rabbits more so back then than I have been recently, um, simply because we have been in a, the last eight years, um, we've been in a weird transition period, maybe a midlife thing where all of our kids grew up. Um, they're very close in age, so they all kind of grew up and moved out all at the same time. And um, dealing with aging parents and taking care of them. And then we moved two years ago. And so, um, and actually eight years ago, we sold our house, our little farm, our one acre farm, and we moved to a lake home where I had very limited space. I did take my rabbits with me, um, but I really didn't have the space to do any breeding. Just, you always have to presume that, yes, hopefully you will sell all of the rabbits. Um, most of mine are pedigree, meaning they have papers. Um, they are very showable, and but you never know. So you always want to make sure that when you're breeding rabbits in the unforeseen, um, reality that you can't sell all of your rabbits you want to make sure that you have space for what you're not selling too uh i think thankfully the last few years there has been an uptick in this again um i think the you know what we went through three years ago or four years ago kind of helped people get back to some skills and i think angora rabbits is one of those things that has kind of taken um notice with more people and I think it's growing again which is a great thing um, but I want to talk today about um, the good the bad and the ugly as I always say I I want to make sure you guys know the realities of what you could experience um, what you hope not to experience but sometimes we do um, I can still remember, and, and I always have to remind people that 20 years ago when I started doing this, the internet was brand spanking new. There was very little out there for me to, you know, like last night I was trying to learn a crochet pattern um, and I just couldn't get it. I am very visual and I could not get it by reading the instructions. So I pulled up YouTube and boom, there is my whole video on how to do this certain stitch that I was trying to do. It was a, a, a grouping of stitches to make a certain pattern. Um, and so back in the day, that wasn't available. Um, it, it was even, um, which I've talked about a hundred times, even getting on the internet and looking up articles to get information were, you know, a handful here and there. And so when I had my first batch of babies, um, I had a first time mom and she had a dozen, 12 babies. And I think I lost all of them and I was devastated. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so I was devastated when I lost the dozen of them, but little did I know that happens quite often. Um, so we're gonna talk about first time moms with your bunnies. And um, again, from there I kind of learned I didn't have 
um, I really didn't have a mentor at that point. I didn't know other people were doing this. Um, you know, the, the buzzwords that are around now weren't really happening back then, the home study movement and all that. So, and I, coming from, I was, I was a city girl that grew up, um, my grandparents had a big farm, so I kind of got some of, some of the stuff from them, uh, but I had no idea. And so I slowly did learn what a rabbit's nest was supposed to look like. And that typically, um, bunnies came about 28 to 31 days. I learned all that stuff as I went along. I bought books um, and read books, paper books. Kindles was, wasn't around either. Um, but again, it was very limited information for me. And so um, I kind of learned as I went along. And I have, like I said, I've slowed down my breeding the last oh, I don't know, probably six to eight years, I have not bred as much as what I used to. I have only done a few batches, even in this house. I think I've done two um, two batches of bunnies here. And one was actually when we moved here two years ago, I had to purchase rabbits because I had gotten so, I think I came here with six and they were quite old. Um, I've talked about my 10 year old who just passed away this last winter. Um, she was one of my original, not original rabbits, but she was born in 2014. And so they were too old to breed. And so I added breeding stock two years ago and, um, and did a batch then. And then last year I did another batch. And so really I've only done a couple batches here. I'm hoping to change that. But again, you also have to think through that process that if you can't sell all those babies, you have to have space for those rabbits to be adults too. Um, so that would be the first thing that I would say consider before you even start breeding your rabbits. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram and stuff, you know that I did breed. Um, I have two red Angora, um, English Angoras, um, Flynn and Scarlet. I bred them about 35 days ago now. And what I do when I breed them is I put them in my phone on my calendar um, that I bred on a certain day and you should be able to tell that the breeding took if not you can go in and breed them a couple days later and if typically this isn't always you know this isn't always truth but typically if she is bred she want nothing to do with the the male the second time around um, I I have always in the past, I used to breed where I took the mom to the, or the female to the male cage. And then as I talked to that, about that, more people said, well, I always did it opposite. Um, you know what? I think it works either way because I've tried it both ways. I've even taken them both out of their cages to an outdoor, one of my play yards and bred them in there and had success. So I, those are one of those things, um, there might be a little bit of truth to it, but I have had successful breedings in the, the male's cage and in the female's cage now um, because I did some testing on that just to see because I didn't, I was told the one way when I first started doing it. Um, so there's that. Typically within 28 to 31 days, um, you're going to have a batch of babies if it was successful. Now, something I want to throw in a couple tidbits here, um, and this is actually something that I am just learning about now, which is um, because I've been on more, I've gotten onto some rabbit pages on Facebook more so recently, both Angora pages and um, Backyard Meat Rabbits, things like that. No, I do not kill my Angora rabbits to get their fiber. That would be against the purpose of breeding for fiber. I do not do that. Um, but with that being said, Angora can be a dual purpose rabbit. Um, I'll leave that one there because I'm sure there'll be a lot of people that won't like that, but it's reality. Um, so I, I've gotten on a lot of groups recently and um, I have seen, and there's always infighting in these groups. I don't understand why we have to do this. Um, because it just, it really kind of ruins the group for me. But there have been um, a couple posts about 
rabbits going beyond that 31 day mark and some people saying well it's been 42 days and she's built a nest she hasn't had them yet what should I do things like that and so I kind of got interested into that because I've also heard and read on a few other forums which I did dig a little bit deeper into this um, I found some threads on a few different pages to the fact that females will retain the sperm um, until they they release it and then get pregnant from it. So that's a real thing. Um, I actually read a really interesting thread that some, some person had a male and female at one point and then the male died. And like seven months later, this bunny all by itself had a batch of four babies and he, he couldn't figure it out. Now, could someone be lying about it? Yes, I'm sure they could. But there's quite a few of those. If you go in and read, there's quite a few of those that are have these same exact stories. So the, the babies that haven't come at 41, 42 days, but there's an obvious nest, um, I think that very well could be that female is holding back um, in doing. And there are studies on this. I did find a few studies. Uh, it's not conclusive, but there is some thought that the female will hold the sperm. So if you have a weird birth where it's beyond that 30, you know, 30, 31 days, um, I don't think that's unusual. I, I'm finding things that that is very common. Um, I can't, thinking back, I never remember having a really unusual, like 10 days out beyond, but thinking back, I'm thinking, yeah, there might have been a few times um, where I maybe um, bred the rabbit and thought it was a different day or whatever. Um, and so that's something to think about too, is maybe this, this actually she didn't get bred when you thought you bred her and that she, she saved it up a few extra days or 10 extra days, whatever it is. I did not find anything yet. And again, this would be another deep dive. I didn't find anything to say how long they can reserve it. Um, but there is instances, instances where they do reserve it. So that's something to think about. Um, when it comes to nest making, that will be your, um, your first, um, realization that there is a baby coming or babies coming a batch coming is that they will make a nest I typically put in a nesting box and I I didn't bring mine in um, you can find these all over the internet it can be as little as a cardboard box in the corner there um, of her cage I have had successful baby batches where she did not make a nest in a box at all she refused and just made a nice nest in the corner of her um, cage and that was enough. So I've gone both ways on that one. Um, but you will be able to tell by her nest, um, which I'm gonna talk about here in a minute, but when she builds a beautiful nest, she is plucking fiber from her belly. She has hay mixed in and it's, you can tell by just looking at it that it's a beautiful nest. And so that's gonna be your first, um, realization that you know there are babies coming and typically they start that a week before it just depends um, you will find them with a big tuft of hay in their mouth I do have pictures of that and <laughs> can I help you and this is why I don't do videos upstairs or try not to I get interrupted so I will try to remember to pop a picture in because of my um, Scarlet, my Red Angora that had a batch last week. She was doing this, but her nest wasn't great when she got done with it. And so I kind of had an inkling last week. So 28 days um, was last Thursday. Um, and so I had her going on Saturday is what I thought the babies would be born. So I put that in. So I put in the 28 day mark on my phone and then I put the 30 day mark in on my phone. Just a reminder because that's kind of how I survive these days are these little reminders in my phone. Um, and so I thought she was going to probably have them on last Saturday. 
she did start making a nest. It wasn't a great nest. So that was kind of my first indication that maybe it wasn't going to go well. And she is a first time mom. Um, so that's always something to watch too. First time moms tend to not do well with the bunnies. Um, just a little graphic warning. They will eat their babies. Uh, rabbits are aggressive cleaners um, to the point where, um, and, and they will eat their babies, not necessarily because they're cleaning them. I did have a weird instance happen. This was many years ago, and I actually had a um, show person from the Detroit area. Her daughter was in, heavily into showing, if I remember right, this has been many years ago, but they were heavily into um, one of the bigger county fairs down there, 4-H fairs, and so they were looking for some new um, show animals, and I had a, I believe it was an English Angora, but I can't remember. Um, anyways, she came up with her daughter, they looked at him, they bought him, took him home, and about a week later, I got a call from her, and she's like, Renee, I have to ask if I can bring the bunny back, and I'm like, why, what happened? And she said, he doesn't have any toes, and we can't show him. So, and neither one of us noticed um, bunnies' feet, uh, angora rabbit feet get very covered with fiber. They just do. It's part of their breed. Um, they're covered with fiber everywhere. And so neither one of us realized that he was missing all of his toes on one of his foot feet and it disqualified him from showing. So I took him back. I named him Ahab and he was with me for many years. Um, but just that was a mom overly aggressively cleaning. Um, and that would have been, for me, that would have been a successful batch because typically with successful batches, they make their nest, they have their babies and they're feeding their babies and you don't have to worry about anything. Doesn't always work that way, but that's what you hope for. Um, and so that's my guess as to why I never realized that anything was wrong because when, when mom does what she needs to do, you're really hands off for a period. And I always stick to that, um, that idea that, you know, just leave them alone and let them do their thing. And so I didn't let my kids handle the bunnies when they were really young. Um, I did very little handling of the babies until they got to a certain age, um, just because mom was doing what she needed to do. So just be forewarned that that does happen. So first time moms aren't always great moms. Um, so Scarlett had, um, we went out to dinner Friday evening, so I had checked on her about four o'clock. We went out to eat. I got back and went out to check her again. This was probably six, six thirty, and there were babies everywhere. And so, um, and they were cold and they were not moving. Now, the old me would have been very upset, collected the baby bodies and gotten rid of them. The newer me in the last few years has realized by watching YouTube and by watching reels that a lot of things are born and they're not breathing and they're cold, but a little vigorous getting them warm in your hand and moving them around will bring them back. I know it's crazy, but it happens, it works. Um, so I was able to bring back all 12. There were 12 babies. I do think there were one or two more because I did find evidence that maybe she had, um, eaten at least one. And so there were 12, they were all cold and not moving or anything. And so I got them and I got in the house. I had all 12 of them tucked in my arms. Um, actually I grabbed I did grab out the nesting box. I put in her nest and I put the babies in there and I ran in the house and I hollered at Scott, you've got to come help me. And so we got the heating pad out and we just started um, gently rubbing their little bodies. And within a few short minutes, we had resuscitated all 12 of them. But um, mom was not cooperative. And so I tried feeding them. Um, what I do, and this is totally, you know, this probably isn't according to what the standards are. I know it's not, but it's just something that has worked for me in the past. What I do is I get a Rubbermaid um, bin 
and I put some towels on the bottom and I bring mom in the house and I put the babies under her. Um, that way you don't have to worry about them. Uh, the babies can squeeze through. I do have, um, I have a guard around all my cages for all of them. And, but they do squeeze out of places sometimes. And so I have lost babies prior to having those guards. I don't think they can get out of the, the cages I have now, but in the past I have had some wiggle out of the cages. Um, so just for my peace of mind, I bring her in in a Rubbermaid, put the babies in with her and let her feed them. Well, she was having nothing to do with it. Um, and so I stopped. I had some of the things you're gonna want to keep on hand if you're gonna be breeding rabbits um, are either goat's milk or cat replacement formula, which you can get at the farm store. Um, I had frozen goat's milk um, from a undone soap project. So I had that out in the freezer. Um, so I brought it in and got it thawing and I keep little, um, oh, pipettes, I guess they're called. And so I had a pipette, which is a perfect size. And so I, and you want to warm the goat's milk. You want to make sure it's not too hot, just like with the baby. And so I gave them goat's milk that night. And I think, so this was Friday night. I think I lost one shortly after we got them revived. There was one that just did not come back well and I lost it. And then I think I lost two more overnight and so I was down to nine and then throughout the day Saturday I brought them in with mom um, twice and then I fed them the goat's milk twice so I was feeding them way over because they just weren't they weren't thriving and you can tell there are a couple signs um, typically when a mom's doing her job she is only gonna feed the babies once a day and it's very fast um it is not like this long drawn out thing she's gonna go in she's gonna feed them and she's done and that's it if it's a healthy litter that she has taken to and not um you know not been difficult or not be a first time mom so typical feedings for babies are once a day that's it um i stepped in and intervened because i could tell you can tell that they're not thriving um, they will get, you can tell their bellies aren't full. Um, you want a nice round belly. And you can also tell on their skin, it gets wrinkly. And so that's the two things to watch out for um, if you need to step in. So we got to Sunday. I think I had nine on Sunday. And then <laughs> the last few days, um, I have gone down to two. I have two babies left. Uh, I'm I'm really bummed, yes, but it happens. It's just one of those things when you're raising livestock, you do lose babies. Uh, you, when you have animals, you do lose them. So I'm down to two, which I'm very thankful for the two. Um, I thought on Sunday when they started dropping quite quickly, I thought, oh, this is all this work and all these beautiful, and I think they were all red. Um, you can kind of tell by their skin color what color they're going to be. And I was just so bummed. Um, so I'm thankful for the two that I have today. I do have them in the basket sitting here. I'm going to pull them out real quick and then I'm, I'm going to put them away. Um, so this morning I have fed them with mama and then I've given them a couple droppers full of um, goat's milk. I honestly don't know how much to tell you to give them. I have no amounts. Um, I am giving them until they seem to not want it anymore and their belly is nice and round. I don't want to overfeed them either. So I'm kind of trying to balance that just by common sense. Um, and they are red. You can tell, I don't know if you'll be able to tell on camera, and they are tiny. They're about um, three days behind is what I'm guessing. So I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see the red. So there's one. And like I said, he's got a nice full belly right now because they just ate. Um, but he is, they are very, very tiny. And Willow, of course, is here and she's wanting to mother them. 
So, <laughs> and they are aggressive. Um, aggressive is not the right word. They are, you can tell that they are eating. Um, they're alert. They're very active when I get them up by mom. And so that makes me hopeful that they'll do okay. But again, they are very tiny for five day old. And there's, do you see his red? I don't know if you can. It's, it's almost an orange hue on them. Um, <laughs> so I also still have them on the heating pad. Um, I have mama in the house. I have a cage set up for her in our, our laundry room. And because they're so tiny, um, I am actually, and this is another thing, I, you know, it might not be kosher, but this is what I do. I've had many successful breeding or babies live because of this. I actually take mama, I flip her over in my arms and I put baby on the nipple. Um, and I, I just, you know, let them sit there and make her just lay there and let them get fed. That's what I'm doing right now twice a day. So, will we have two babies at the end of the week? I don't know. Um, I think we've gotten through the hard first few days here. No. Um, and so I am hopeful. They are looking good today. They are still small. And, and I don't, another thing that I did not research before I did this video, and I probably should, um, I almost wonder if her milk didn't come in at first. Like, I don't know, I know with like cows and stuff, they can hold back. I don't know if she can do that. I don't know if rabbits do that. So that's another thing I probably should look into. But I feel like the first couple days, she they just weren't getting anything from her. Um, and I'm sure that's, you know, that's common or typical. So that's kind of where we're at today. Um, again, things you want to have on hand, uh, you want to make sure you have a pipette or a eyedropper, um, a small tiny one. You want cat formula, or sorry, not cat formula, cat replacement, um, well, I guess it would be cat replacement formula, or goat's, goat's milk. Um, some of the sites I looked at um, also had recipes to add things into those two things, because unfortunately a rabbit's milk um, is very unique and you can't get exactly what the bunnies need from those two. They seem to be doing okay. I don't. I did not do the extra stuff in there. Um, I saw one that said, was it lactate or something had to, had to be added to it, uh, which I have not done. That might be something you look into and maybe keep those. I think they're like supplements or things you can get. Um, that might be something else you want to look into. So the two, either goat's milk or cat replacement, uh, eyedropper. Um, if mama is not making a great nest, meaning she's not pulling enough fiber to make a really, it, they are beautiful nests when they get done with them. Um, that might be an indication that you're going to have a problem. Um, what else? Uh, taking matters into your own hands. If the baby is cold and not breathing does not mean it's gone. Um, and again, I learned that the last few years from watching YouTube and reels that they revive, you know, calves and goats and all of these things. Um, and that's exactly what I've been able to do. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, I hope that uh, gave you some ideas if you're breeding your own rabbits. And um, I will keep you posted on the two little babes. Uh, I hope they're here by the end of the week. Um, again, I do most of that daily stuff on Instagram. So if you haven't already, please go over and follow me there. Um, I try to do stuff daily there and you will kind of see the updates on the babies. Um, so yeah, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I hope you're creating something. Bye.